Razer updates their laptops a lot, honestly. Usually it's like a new processor and a new display and maybe a slight bump in specs. But this time, this time, they basically took all of the criticisms that myself and like others have been giving them about this lineup and they went, okay, we'll fix it. And well, Razer sent over the Razer Blade 15 to borrow for review. And so let's talk about what they changed and how it'll affect you in this complete walkthrough. Now, if you aren't familiar, Complete Walked in this channel is where I try to go through every single feature I possibly can on a new device so that you guys are better prepared should you be in the market to actually go buy one. With that said, there's a lot to go through. So let's get started with the hardware. Firstly, there are two distinct versions of the Razer Blade 15. We have the base model, which is the less expensive, lower spec model, but still very much a gaming PC. And then we have the more powerful, higher spec, more expensive, advanced model both with multiple sets of SKUs and configurations. Here though, we'll be focusing on the advanced model because I think it's the one most of you guys probably care about and it's the one that I personally would be more interested in buying at the moment. With that said, this is the new Razer Blade Advanced 2020 model. And design-wise, it sports the same boxy design language that Razer updated their Blade laptops to not too long ago that I actually like. And we have the same CNC milled aluminum body that is one of the reasons I think so many people have always gravitated towards the Blade laptops. They just feel more premium than most Windows laptops. Although that is definitely changed over the last few years and Razer is getting more and more competition in that aspect. Now the dimensions are identical to the last model and the weight is about the same at 4.7 pounds. Also here on the back, we have the unmistakable three-headed snake logo. That is a green LED that you can control from the included Razer Synapse app to have it either on or off, or even have it do a breathing effect as well. The screen on this generation is now available in two versions. We have a 300 Hertz FHD non-touchscreen display and a 4K OLED touchscreen. I have the 300 Hertz model here, and if you're not familiar, that means the screen is capable of refreshing the image on it up to 300 times a second. Now, I personally would rather have the OLED's brightness and contrast and the extra resolution since I use these laptops to edit video. But the benefit of 300 Hertz can be a big deal to gamers. In games that support these speeds, it can mean much smoother animations and faster reaction times, something that can be a competitive advantage in say a first person shooter game. If you aren't playing games though, you will still see some of the effects, but just not much. I noticed it, for example, when scrolling through a website in Edge. Yes, I've been trying out the new Edge based on Chromium, and honestly, it's not bad at all. Either way, it's hard for me to show you, but the scrolling is super fluid and definitely noticeable at this high of a refresh rate. And the same goes for things in say like the start menu in Windows and other places, etc. Honestly though, unless you're going to game, you're obviously not gonna care that much about it. You can though, thankfully turn the high refresh rate off if you don't use it to help a bit with battery life in that same Synapse app. Above the screen, we have our webcam and hardware required for Windows Hello that allows you to log into the computer with your face. That webcam is capable of 720p video and here's what that looks like and what the built-in microphones sound like. And that brings us to the keyboard, which I have been calling Razer out for for years now. It does, however, have this weird rogue function button at the bottom right that I hate. Unlike every other keyboard ever that has the arrow buttons up against the bottom right, Razer on these laptops likes to push it over with the extra function key, causing you to push right instead of down, down instead of left, and function instead of right. One complaint I do have about the keyboard though is the fact that Razer, again, decided to put this rogue function button in the bottom right corner. They did! Still keep that rogue right function key that I hate and will mention in every video until they remove it. Well, they finally fixed it. The arrow keys are where they belong, and are the right size. The shift key is no longer super tiny and is actually way longer than I think it needs to be, but it almost feels like they're overcompensating for me yelling at them for so long, but it's, it's fine and it's just better than it was, no matter what. Now, I know I didn't single-handedly cause Razer to fix the keyboard, but I'd like to pretend that that is the case, so you're welcome. Besides that, it is still the same clicky keyboard that is nice to type on and is also RGB per key chroma enabled, meaning that you can change the color on any of the keys individually if you want, or you can set it up to have different pre-configured effects. On either side of that keyboard, we have four speakers that are Dolby Atmos enabled and they get pretty loud and for the most part, sound pretty good. Under that, we have our thankfully large glass trackpad that is a Microsoft Precision trackpad, so it's much more responsive and can use Windows gestures as well. And that brings us to the next thing that Razer fixed after complaints. Let's talk about the ports. On the left, we have a proprietary power port that allows you to use the 230 watt charger to charge the 80 watt hour battery inside. And 
Really quick, let's see how it does in a, albeit very unscientific, test of playing a 1080p YouTube video on half brightness with the 300 hertz on, since that is on by default. Next to that power port, we have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and new this year, an extra USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C port. So we no longer have just the one on the right, like usual, which means you can actually plug in more than one USB C device at a time. Also, that USB C port, along with the one on the right that we'll get to in a sec, now supports USB C power delivery. So while you'll need the included charger to utilize the full power of the CPU and GPU, you at least now have the option of using up to a 100 watt USB power delivery charger to charge it. This is something that I've also mentioned was a bit of a drag with the last model while traveling, as most plane outlets turn themselves off when you plug in anything over 65 watts. So, using a 65 watt USB-C charger now, you can at least keep using the laptop for less intensive tasks on all of those long flights that we're not taking anymore. We'll, we'll get there, guys. Moving to the right side, we have a Kensington lock, an HDMI 2.0B port, another USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port, and our other USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port that is Thunderbolt 3 capable, which means it's great for faster media storage and can even be used with docks and eGPUs. If you want to learn more about that, though, I have a link to a video I did a while back that explains that. Oh, and we have yet another thing that I'm so excited for. We have a UHS-3 SD card slot. Now, I have this on the Razer Blade Studio Edition, but it's a lot more expensive than these models. And so now that it's on every advanced model, it's just good for anyone who creates content and their camera uses SD cards. It is one less adapter to forget to bring. On the inside, we have a 10th gen Intel 8 core i7 10875H, up from the 6 core 9th gen from last year. That's paired with 16 gigs of faster DDR4 2,933 megahertz RAM, but it's also user upgradable up to 64 gigs and will also support Intel's XMP RAM as well. For storage, we have either a 512 gig or one terabyte M.2 NVMe PCIe SSD, which is also user upgradable. And I've actually managed to find a four terabyte SSD that works in it really well that I'll link to below if anyone's interested. And honestly, just kudos to Razer for allowing people to upgrade both of those things as a lot of manufacturers no longer do. For connectivity, we have Bluetooth 5.0 and 802.11ax, aka Wi-Fi 6, now compared to last year. And you can check out my Decoder episode, which is the explainer series I do here on the channel for what Wi-Fi 6 is and the benefits of it if you're interested in that. Now, for the GPU, we have the choice of either an NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super or 2080 Super, which are the latest top-end consumer GPUs from NVIDIA. The model I have here is a 2070 Super version, and here are some popular benchmarks so you can see how it fares compared to other laptops that you might be interested in. And thanks to Razer's no bloat policy, it runs Windows 10 and doesn't have any apps from Razer pre-installed like other manufacturers might do, except for of course that Synapse app, but that's pretty useful, so I don't really consider that bloatware. We do, however, have some Microsoft added bloatware, which you can easily right click and uninstall, so not the biggest deal. The new Razer Blade 15 2020 Advanced Model starts at $25.99.99, and that's for this RTX 20 Super Max-Q version with the 300 hertz display and a 512 gig SSD. If you wanted the RTX 2080 Super Max-Q with the 300 hertz display, that would go up to $3,000, and then the OLED 4K would go to $3,300. Regardless, I'll leave a link below to the best price that I could find and for anyone who wants any more info. And there we go, complete walkthrough on the Razer Blade 15. Honestly, it's just great to see any company out there take criticisms from people, whether the reviewers or their own consumers, etc., and actually fix them. Like, what a concept, right? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the laptop, of this video, etc. Always enjoy hearing from you guys. Um, if you like this video though, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to to subscribe so you can notify when I do new videos. Also, I have a link below to my email newsletter. It goes out once a week. It has all the videos that I do here, plus other tips and tricks and fun stuff that I do on the website that doesn't necessarily make it here to video. So check that out as well. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.